world cannot do without Pakistan. Cricket and it cannot do without the great country of Pakistan. A brazen attack on Sri Lanka's cricket team was caught on tape. The shots rang out as a team reached a traffic circle near the main sports stadium in eastern Pakistan. No Pakistani was involved in 9-11. Yet Pakistan has become the center of world terrorism now. Tuesday's attack reinforced perceptions Pakistan is unable to control a raging militancy that's increasingly threatening to destabilize a nation of 170 million. The assault will likely end hopes of international cricket teams or any sports teams playing in the country for months, if not years. Everybody knows that the days are loaded. Everybody rolls with Fingers crossed. Unable to play cricket in Pakistan, it's the heart is ripped out of world cricket. The war is over. Everybody knows the good guys. We've just arrived in Pakistan, and there's about 11 of us, I think. This is the Wounded Tiger Tour. The rich get rich. And we're a mixture of journalists and businessmen and uh, academics and uh, got an Irishman. Are you a cricketer? I haven't played since I was about 12 years old. Cricket is an expression of the national personality of Pakistan. It is something which unites Pakistan. It's a wonderful journey. Not the least of the pleasures is to look out of the window and count the number of cricket matches. And it is something which also expresses amazingly the magic and the mystery and the genius of Pakistan. It's a mixture of Hawaii and Pakistan. Amazing! This is one of the most beautiful, perfect so drives. It is. Peter Bond, Captain of Wounded Tiger 11, members of the touring team. This is a historic moment that you and your men showed courage to come to Pakistan. You are the first foreign team to play after 10 years. Technically, we are an international team, but not in the usual sense. The Wounded Tigers are beginning a seven match tour a country where the professionals fear to tread. I mean, can't really kidnap 12 of us, can they? They're led by Peter Oborn, who's written a book on the history of Pakistani cricket. I think one of the reasons I wrote the book was to show that Pakistan has been misreported systematically as a country and as a cricket team in the Western press. How do you know Peter? Back from university days, we've stayed in touch. In Ireland. What's your day job? I teach English at UCL, literature and a bit of film as well. Were you worried about coming to Pakistan? A little bit. I've been reading about the Foreign Office guidance. There was the suicide bombings last week, but uh, Peter has absolutely assured me that Lahore and Karachi are very safe. And here's Roger Alton from the Times newspaper. There's been a very heavy overnight rain. So I'm going to the ground to inspect the wicket. At the time of independence, this part of Lahore was basically fields and trees. And the young Imran Khan, who was brought up around here, would just walk out of his back door and go out and shoot pheasants or whatever in the woods. Fortunately, it's not a very long journey to the Bagijina, which is perfection itself, with hawks circling over the ground at nightfall. And it was the first test matches were played here. And, uh, no, we're not going to play. Salam alaikum. This was the centre of cricket in Pakistan all the way up from about 1880 till the 1960s. Jardine played here. Lord Tennyson's 11, the Australians played here. So this is a real sacred place for the history of cricket in Pakistan. Pakistan's cricket team emerged out of the trauma of partition from India in 1947. I have seen the cricket museum of Lords. So that is how the idea was born. Why don't we turn this into a cricket museum? Initially unrecognized, under its inspirational leadership, Pakistan grew to become a major force in world cricket. Of course, it was sort of English only for a long time. And the great Fazal Mahmood, one of the greatest players in the history of the game, as a young man would go to that gate there and shout out, anybody want a player? He'd shout it. And somebody would say, all right, Fazal, come on and play. But it's very important to understand that the early Pakistan cricketers weren't just cricketers, they were nation builders. All of the great early cricketers in Pakistan had been part of the Pakistan movement, anti-British, anti-colonial, very much behind the Muslim League and Jinnah. 
And so the early players were political revolutionaries, and that would include A.H. Kadar, the first captain of the test team, included Fazal Mahmood in particular, and they can be regarded as the early founders of the Pakistan nation and the national consciousness. That's why cricket is so important, and this is one of the centres of it. Well, that's a pity. We're not going to play today, are we? No, I don't think so. No. <laughs> well, it's great to see you. Yeah, it might be. I came just to check that it, the game is off, and it certainly is. So. And look at that fellow walking out. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well. Where's the, the circus? I think we might go and look around all the hall that's dead today. You've got to think of this. It's in the 1930s and Pakistan's coming into being. This is, um, there's no electricity really, almost none, I think I'm right in saying. No cars, just tongas. It's a beautiful area of the hall where the early cricket team learnt its cricket. But they all came from about 100 yards or 200 yards away from each other. Nice. Yeah, nice. There's cricket club registered. So they're in this alley. We're getting to the home now of A.H. Kadar, the first captain of Pakistan, where he was born. Holy site of Pakistan Test cricket, actually. Up here. Hello. Hello. I'm Peter. Yes! <laughs> How are you? I'm very good. And you see, there is the, there is, there's his uh, cricket stump. Uh, you can imagine Kadar. He'd have aged seven. Playing his first four defensive stroke. Endless games of cricket in his backyard. <laughs> so this is where Pakistan's test match story begins. Yeah. Young Kadar playing. He's a paradoxical figure. He went to Oxford and he, he was very English in a way. He wore smart German street suits and he used to go and stay with Alec Douglas Hume's family up at the Hursel and the borders. And he was very well connected in many ways, but actually at the same time he was fighting a very important battle against what he saw as colonial dominance. So when the team arrived in England in 1954, most English people didn't even know that Pakistan existed. They hadn't really worked it out. It felt that it was on sufferance as a cricket team and as a nation. And then finally they came to the Oval where Fazal Mahmood ran through the England team, took 12 wickets for 99 runs and Pakistan came to an unexpected victory of 24 runs. And here we have A.H. Kadar, the triumphant captain. And they defeated England, the old colonial power, on English territory, fulfilling his dream. It's a personal justification. It's a vindication of everything he was and believes in. A momentous moment for Kadar. And then he formed this alliance of Zede Bhutto, when Bhutto appointed Kadar chairman of the cricket board in the 1970s. And they worked together against what they by then saw as Western imperialism. For instance, he led the move to get apartheid South Africa out of international cricket, and he also led the movement against white dominance of international cricket. Kadar was hated by the English. It's not a coincidence that he was never given a knighthood, he was never given a peerage by the British. So whereas the great West Indian nation builders, Leary Constantine, so Frank Worrell and people got rewarded because they were liked. Kadar, who's just as significant a figure as either of those, was never given a single gong by the British. And for him, I suspect by the end, that was a matter of personal pride. It's Peter Oborn. Peace. Yeah, thank you. Look at that pavilion. It's From the distance, it yeah. looks like any mosque, right? It is a wonderful expression of how cricket can be adapted from a Western culture and become an expression somehow of Pakistan and Muslim culture. The original religion is sports. You just couldn't find a better place to play cricket. I can't get over it. <laughs> Great work. Great fielding, Ewan. If you look at the lovely viewing pavilions, the Pakistan flag, over the pavilion and the scoreboard. Is it a mosque overlooking the ground? The man who built this ground is an artist. I'm quite glad it wasn't 40-40, you know. I mean, these are just 
country lads. Boundaries of ale. We are honoured to have Mr. Abdul Qadir playing for us. You were playing in the 1980s. 80s, yes, yeah, that's right. Yeah. 18 years. You know, I played near about 70 test matches, got near about 250 test wickets. Do we put on Abdul now? You would have thought so, to be honest, wouldn't you? Yeah, I think that's the right thing to do. And then, yeah. No, this is magic. Leg spin bowling is a real art. A lovely bowling! My last wicket was Brian Lara, probably, <laughs> yeah, well, that's on 49. Do you want a fire? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and before that, I, 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 I bowled clean bowled Sachin Tendulkar. The world does not understand the debt it owes to Abdul Qadir for reinventing wrist spin bowling. Well done, Abdul. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. The googly, they just didn't see it. Yeah. It was worth coming to Pakistan just for that. Just for that. Yeah. Either you should hit me out of the ground or either, you know, I will get you out. I mean, I, I did that sort of bother. Well done, Peter. Ian Botham I like very much. I like with Richard because, you know, they were attacking batsmen actually and I was the attacking bowler. So there was a beautiful mantle confrontation between me and the rest of the other attacking batsmen. My favourite player is Abdul Qadir. Bold. Another googly. I mean, you can't be a complete bowler if you don't have mission and ambition. Leg spin bowling is magic. And the best magician can have something in his pocket till the end. Oh, Peter Swab! <laughs> 200 exactly is required to win. Of 20 of us. It's a look, it's quite beautiful. Good shot! He doesn't know the meaning of a defensive shot. Oh! How does that go down in the books, huh? It's a run out. Stumping was not given. He walked out of his ground. He pulled out a stump. That is a run out. The score is 33 for 7. Chasing 200. Quite an acceleration is being asked. <laughs> you may have thrashed us today, we got a thorough beating, but this was a day's cricket which none of us will ever forget as long as we live. It is a matter of urgency that cricket returns to this country. I am quite clear that the security situation can be constructed which will enable international teams to come back and it should not be too distant. We may take measures. Have you heard we're not taking the train? Now just rather uncomfortable with this going on the train. What's the reason for that? Probably security of things here to worry about. I think the decision is to take the fly. We've decided not to go by train to Karachi. A body of English cricketers such as this might be a target. If a mishap did happen and we were all kidnapped. Overweight, white, middle class men, you're welcome to them. Keep, Keep them. them. Yeah. <laughs> well done. <laughs> I have never seen a dresser in this big. I've played in pavilions that are smaller than the dressing room here. We've got live television outside. 
think this is the closest to a test match I'm likely to get. This is a very historic occasion, the first team to grace this country after a longish period of time. Peter Airborne, how do you do? We are poor players, you know me. We are old men, you know me. We're not. I'm an international player. Sorry, what is your name? Hassan Jamil. Ah, right. I played 77, 78, 79. 79 World Cup. You had the young Imran. Yeah. You had Zahir at his Zahir, pump. Yeah, you yeah, had Asif as 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 Oh, the, Asif was still there. And uh, Wazim Bari, was he still there? Wazim Bari was there. Was, was there, yes. Safras was there. Safras. It's a great team. Yeah. What was your particular? I was an all rounder. You were an all rounder, yes, I can't. Canaria is playing from your side. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. And England is banned. No, I think so. Yeah. But not I mean, he's banned by World Cricket, isn't he? What do you think? Yeah, I've been ambushed by uh, Arif, my host. He's, I said I sent a bulletin that uh, we, we, we've been so badly run and defeated in our first few games that we needed a few ringers, a few decent locals. He came up to me about half an hour ago and said, ah, oh, yes, we've got some great players for you, including Danish Canaria. And, um, well, he's been banned from world cricket. It would be so insufferably rude to say, no, we're not going to have him. And of course, he's a great bowler, but I, you know, I mean, match fixing is disgusting. And it's the bane of Pakistan cricket. Arif Abbasi is a great Karachi businessman. He comes from a fantastically grand cricketing family. He saved the cricket in Pakistan in many ways. There he is, the big man. Uh, hello, Arif. Did you, did you like the dressing rooms? I think these are the most splendid dressing rooms I've ever been in. Oh. And of course, Danis is the highest wicket taker in the history of Pakistan spinners. 267 wickets. And so he's been a great uh, mover and shaker in the Pakistan cricketing and business world for the last half century. He, he's great value, Arif. But he has ambushed me. ECB have banned you for life? The police investigation came in in UK. They cleared me. And the only statement they've got against him is from a chap who's already been convicted and prisoned. I didn't did fixing. I didn't took money. I didn't do anything. Welcome to Commentary Box. Thank you very much, Danish, and good to see English players are playing here. Yeah, good to have them. Richard and uh, Wasim Ubin are the two openers. 256 runs is the target in 35 overs. So there are two slips for Aftab Malik, who runs away. It's almost edged. Good delivery, just a bit outside the upstream. And it beats the bat, goes through to the wicket keeper. It checks in 255. It's quite a bit, isn't it? But, um, you know. The first seven and over. I'm really more interested in a bit of respectability. When the close ups, it looks, you know, like it? Pro it's proper. proper it's PTV, okay. I mean, it's bonkers, is one way of putting it. When you televise it, you sell the rights. Yes, absolutely. What happened there, Richard? Down track and this It's our own bloody umpire as well. I'll sack him. I just thought, well, if I'm going to look like an idiot, go down the track. <laughs> this is the most historic tour after the MCC is when they first introduced cricket to India. Is that what it is? That's what I've sold it as. Tell us about the TV coverage. How did that happen? They were quite willing to show it. So they're covering it with common. Good evening, Peter. And Good evening. Nice to have you here in the commentary box. It's still, to, uh, uh, to English people, uh, they like to come in Pakistan and play here. Oh, it's a real pleasure to be here. What an evening. Now, this is Collett. He's a left-hander. He played for Warwickshire under-19s as an off-spinner. Edges to swan. Chinese cut. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the score moves on to 46 after 10.4 overs. 211 needed in, uh, in, in approximately 25 overs. It's amazing to think that Karachi was a fishing port of barely a population of 300,000 people uh, only 70 years ago. We've been deeply privileged to be here and I hope that other teams will follow us. I'm, I'm sure they will. It's most extraordinary and improbable, all of this. This is content. This is content which you else? are providing for free. This is a reversion to the... I've sold the, the rights. Yes, I bet you have. I'm making an absolute bomb. I bet you are. Are we getting um, See, match fees? You never asked for it. This is, <laughs> yes, yes. This is the subsidy by the players of the viewers. 
You're all former test players or first-class cricketers, but you took time off in order to play a touring side of English cricket. And Danish, come on. Thank you very much. Who's done himself in? We're thoroughly disreputable, and you made us respectable. <laughs> we'll never forget the sacrifice and the generosity of your life. And here we are in you know, the Karachi Gym Khana, which is really the ground where Pakistan gained effectively its test status. And, and in Karachi, which is one of the most exciting cities of the world, an amazing place. It's in a high security zone, our club. It's full of history, this club. This is one of the shrines of subcontinental cricket. This is an amazing picture. This is Lord Tennyson's 11 playing Sin in 1937, and that's Lord Tennyson, captain of Hampshire, and Bill Edrich, a middle set going out to bat, Sin 348. You see, Sin was a powerful team. 35 overs, power play for the first 10, lunch in between innings. Look at the title of history of cricket in Pakistan. I think that Pakistan is badly understood. I think that Pakistan cricket is badly understood, and I wanted to tell the truth. We're not going to score 291. Yeah, it was fierce, as they say in Colonial. Colonial, yes. Our nation is very optimistic that there is a change on the cards. Maybe in the next year or so, you might see an international team playing in Pakistan. It makes a huge difference. We've got beautiful ground, we've got beautiful atmosphere, the weather is beautiful, we've got natural resources, we've got coal, we've got agriculture, we've got oil, we've got gas, we've got sea, we've got everything. What we're lacking is literacy. I mean, if you educate our people, they, they go places. I'll tell you what, in the 60s, we had a double-digit growth, 22% DGDP, the original Asian tiger. Those people are not around because of Muslim uh, uh, radicals. We follow our religion as well, but we are not extremists. We have never been appreciated. Like, one side is China, one side is India, one side is Afghanistan, Iran. So this place has been used by everyone. Use and abuse. It's a lovely day. I love this drum. Chasing 291. I'm quite confident. Just under 10 and over. That's what I like doing most, is playing cricket. International cricket must return to Pakistan. Unable to play cricket in Pakistan, it's the heart is ripped out of world cricket. We shall be flying at 3,500 meters, and our flight time to Chitra will be 45 minutes. This is the first ever international touring side to visit um, Chitra, the Northern <laughs> Territories of Pakistan. <laughs> Chitral is right at the top of Pakistan, on the Afghan border. No, it's, it, it sort of merges with Afghanistan. This is the northern areas of Pakistan here. Flights into Chitral are safe when the weather is absolutely clear. Our host and guide in Chitral is Prince Siraj Ul Mulk, whose family has ruled Chitral for generations. Yes, you've seen an aircraft crashed. That's a folk of friendship aircraft. And it didn't happen because of the mountains around us. The pilot landed in the center of the runway and then he wasn't able to stop it and it went down in his belly. It's, so uh, that's Afghanistan, yeah, that's, that's west. By the late 19th century, the British had total control of India, but they were terrified that the Russians, who were growing east all the time, would come down and seize India from them. Here we are in Chitral, which was the frontier state between encroaching Russia and the plains uh, of the Punjab below. A very interesting parallel actually with today. My family has been here for almost 700 years, so we have a long and a very strong connection with Chitra. 
these, who are these caps? Chitral Scouts. They are the Chitral Scouts, <laughs> It's an enormous pleasure for us at the Langland School and College to host Peter Oborn and his cricket team from England. Um, never before have I arrived at a cricket match to be greeted by bagpipes, but I'm now going to make it mandatory for all future fixtures by the way. <laughs> You need a drinks break every hour. You thought? Heads. Heads it is. Your choice. I will invite you to bat, your team to bat, please. The school will bat and the wounded tigers are fielding. I had the opportunity to come out here and teach English for a year, so I jumped at the chance. It's about one-third girls and two-thirds boys. So separate buildings. One class for each year of girls and two classes for boys. This is the last part of the subcontinent that came under British rule. Mm. Let's be honest yeah. about it. And, and the experience, uh, the colonial experience here wasn't bad. It may be bad in many parts of the world. Was bad. British didn't interfere really in the administration or the culture. Uh, they kept aloof. They ensured that the rulers didn't commit excess, but they didn't go beyond that. So they remembered very positive. This is his first delivery in class, and he faced it very well. Up until the middle of the 19th century, the British were not really an imperial nation. We saw ourselves as traders. Of course, we had to protect our economic interests with the Royal Navy and with local troops, but fundamentally, we didn't see set out to acquire land. This only happened with the arrival of Benjamin Disraeli and the Imperial Party, 1860 onwards. Uh, Queen Victoria was made Empress of India and Chitral, completely strategically unimportant state which nobody knew anything about, suddenly becomes the vital barrier against the feared Russian bear. Now this is my great-grandfather, Aman ul Mulk. The British uh, refer to him as the Great Methar because he ruled for 36 years. Now when he died in uh, 1892, a war of accession started among his sons. The oldest, which was Nizam, was in Gilgit. So he was far away. His brother Afzal was in Chitral close by. With the help of an uncle of his, who had Afghan connections, he immediately took over Chitral and installed himself as the king. And then the Afghan uncle, he saw the vacuum, thought, why can't he himself become the ruler? By then, the legitimate ruler, which was the oldest son, Nizam ul Mulk, backed by the Brits, he marched onto Chitral with his followers and took over the state. But he had a younger brother who invited Nizam for a Markhor hunt and pushed him off the cliff and killed him and made himself the ruler. And that was it. Well, there was chaos in Chitral after the death of the ruler in 1892. And the British felt that in order to stop the Russians getting hold of it, we better come to Chitral and occupy it, which we did with a pathetically small amount of troops, maybe a hundred in all. And gradually, the Brits here were besieged. Thank you. Well done. Hello. How do you do? What a wonderful place to be. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Hello. How are you? we perfectly terrifying, these people. Um, <laughs> the wall is the boundary, yeah. All right, heads. Heads. You won the toss. Can you bat? You bat. Imagine this place just over 100 years ago uh, when the siege is going on. The snipers and the trees are round. Uh, the, the forces are going closer. It was a, a siege of 40 days or something like that. By the end of it, there's almost nothing to eat. There's almost no ammunition left. Most of the rifles even have stopped working. Uh, there's a few British officers and some very, very brave Sikh soldiers. It's very desperate indeed. I was bowled second ball middle stump, playing, off, playing a forward defence. I don't know what on earth, how on earth that was out. 
but they're fast bowling. Another wicket has just fallen. Not a great shot, actually. There's no lack of talent. We are being thrashed. They're eating horse flesh. Uh, they're ill. There's a stench of excrement and rotting carcasses because they have to do that. Go to the toilet here. They have to, there's death all around. They can't dispose of anything. And they just have got very good fast bowling, which is a bit too much for most, but all of us. Apart from you in a game. Oh, well played. Good up. Well done. Four. That's four. By the end, they were skeletons. <laughs> it's not a great performance by us. Six down. Six down. For about 40. Lethal in swinging Yorkers. These guys have a lot of talent. Put on a helmet, William. Uh, the, this is the cream of the cricketers in Yes, the cream cricketers. Uh, almost every club uh, of this area. A cock, the column, dragging its cannons over the Shandor Pass, arrived in Chitral to relieve the siege. The British, with the siege of Chitral, they came and retake the place. And what was essentially a defeat became a glorious uh, imperial triumph, uh, showing rather more pluck in adversity than the Wounded Tigers have demonstrated this afternoon, it has to be said. Another wicket. Chitral, Ladysmith and Mafeking are the three, uh, although Chitral is, I suppose, the least famous. Final wicket has just fallen. <laughs> Ignominious defeat. <laughs> this was a select team from the 38 clubs in, in Chitral. It's a long time yeah. no one come to Chitral and play with us. It was quite it made a good game. The your innings was good because we had you five down. It was, it was a little super wicket to play on. You like this one? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. I will be taking a message back to the Pakistan Cricket Board. I will be telling them that it's time that they started to support more the place which is clearly one of the future nurseries of the game, giving us a thorough thrashing. Thank you, Thank you very much indeed. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah, we won't play a better team than them. I mean, it's really unbelievable. So the youngest of all these brothers who keep kept killing each other was one Shuja Ul Mulk. He's my grandfather, he's my father's father. And he was then only 13 years old. So the British must have thought, well, a 13 year old can do only that much harm. And they installed him as the, the ruler of Chitral. And whatever influence that we still have in the sense that our relatives are still being voted in is really because of the good work our grandfather had done. Chitral region is very, very big, you know, it's 14,000 square kilometers. Mm -hmm. It's geographically very large with a very thin spread of population. Now the Kalash, their real name was Kafirs, and their area was called Kafiristan. This is an historic day. We are the first international cricket team ever to visit Kalash. Welcome. Hello. Thank you. How do you do? How do you do? How do you, Peter? Look at that grass. That is beautiful. It's sublime. In fact, what we call Chitral is really part of greater Kafiristan. And the Kafir tribe were ruling this whole area, much bigger than what you're seeing Chitral, on both sides of the international border between Pakistan and Afghanistan. Confined to three small valleys and reduced to 4,000 people. This whole tribe is, is going to be dying out very soon. They're finding it economically unsustainable to carry on with the traditions that they have. They have to spend a lot of money to sustain these customs. So therefore, it's very convenient for them to convert to Islam. And they say, well, I'm a Muslim, so I don't have to 
This is not, not really that easy, is it? Thank you for playing us. Thank you. This is a historic match. Well, first to, English yeah, team to play Kalash Valley. Thank you. And how often do you play every week? Yes. No, no. daily. 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 They're going to be very good, these guys. <laughs> so this is the wicket. This is the wicket. Yeah. This is the pitch. A very hard pitch. Yeah, I should think this is very, very, very. I see the white stones. That is the boundary line. Yeah, yes, I see. It is absolutely fantastic. Well, this end, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. If the ball hits the walnut trees and falls down in, inside the ground, it's not supposed to be a boundary. Right. It's the same as they, you, you continue <laughs> running. You <laughs> wild cricket, you like yeah. wild swimming. Free starting. Peter, there's one more thing. Yeah. It's customary here for the spectators to be sitting within the boundary. There is no circle, okay. no power play. So they want to come as close as possible to the players. This is the rule of this ground. Because it is a uh, tape ball. Tape ball, yeah. It's peculiar to the place. Yeah, this is not that soft, anyway, yeah. Yeah, tape ball. I'm going to send somebody back to get boxes out of the kit. So, what do you think, William? You wouldn't want the ball going anyway. No. <laughs> Good. Crescent. 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 Right, I, I am going to put you into bat. You, you need to be back on the boundary, you. Good shot. Good shot. Well in there, Massey. Nice, nice. Careful. Hard luck, cause. Sorry, Rupert. That's nice work. Nice work. That a great shot. So far, then, this game is going exactly the same way as all the other games. And this was the winnable one. Oh, bad luck, William. We are also the descendant of the Alexander's great. We are celebrating for the spring. This is the time where the love marriage can take place. They sing a song about the shepherds who live in the pastures up in the high mountains. Another six. To give a blessing for the good herbs and then making of good cheese. It's the happiness for the new year. Goodbye, leg. I'll pitch it up a bit more, I think. Oh! <laughs> that Selkirk guile works in the Kalash Valley. <laughs> oh, lovely shot. Up there, Massey, up there, Massey. Thank you very much. It was enormous fun. Thank you. 237. <laughs> 237. Yeah. Well, that could have gone better. That's why I missed.
history is not written by the victims, but by those with laptops. <laughs> So those sixes hit off you will be um, <laughs> singles. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> what a match. What a match. That was brilliant. Thank you again. Thanks, I assault the you need to get the reports in the press. Thank you. Coming into four. No, we are actually. Because they play in the Chitral Premier League. You know, if we keep going north, further and further away from the cricketing centre of gravity in Pakistan. <laughs> the better our chances of yeah. securing a victory are. Maybe tomorrow or Asuj. Yeah. I mean, ideally, Tajikistan or something like that. <laughs> Cricket is uh, relatively a new game in Chitral. There's a lot of enthusiasm among the young people. But having said that, there isn't enough level ground in Chitral. Great shot. It's all mountains here. Just lads in the streets. Sure. It's probably gay, but... Hello. This is high grade stuff. People here are poor. Yeah. Cricket with its bats and with its pads and with the balls is an expensive game. Another one. Oh no, this is serious cricket. Imran is very keen on developing cricket up here. That's who politically you support him doing that as well? That's what his supporters probably think. And it's amazingly significant for Imran. It validates his claim. That's full of Taliban at the moment. Nuristan is full of Taliban, yeah. Where we were yesterday is where it was. Very close, yeah. It's amazing we were about three miles, we just down there. Another hotbed of insurgency in Afghanistan. We've now reached the outskirts of Mastouj where we're going to play cricket tomorrow. But we've just been tranced by this cricket match in the middle distance. And he's bowled. That was, a, that was very unfortunate. It was a, it skimmed. They're all good. Every single one of them is good. Look at the pitch. They can do it here. Oh! Look at this boy, seven years old. He's going, oh. Shots of lovely on drive. Very good. Well, we're in Mastouj for the last game of the tour, deep in Upper Chitral. So, this is the gateway to Russia? It is. This is the gateway to Russia. Today, we launch Operation Last Hope uh, as we search for that elusive victory. The skipper has assured us that today we're going all out for victory. That was a promise made at breakfast. And there's a long time between breakfast and the actual cricket. But it is a spectacularly beautiful place to play. So getting trounced is much less painful here than it would be if we were playing in, say, the suburbs of Milton Keynes. <laughs> what I love about it is my childhood. Just hanging out with the local village boys who look up to you as their leader for nothing. Accident or birth. I play my part whatever I can. I think Betfair have us at about 50 to 1 at the moment, which in a two horse race, you know, is not encouraging odds. Were we to defeat Mastouge today, they would become the laughing stock of Chitrali cricket, the only people to have lost to this team of British duffers. And that might be considered rude and an abuse of hospitality. Pakistan at the moment is very fractured and Chitral is very much dislocated from the central government. Cricket could be a way of bringing Chitral back more in tune with the kind of federal system. The explosions of friendliness and hospitality have been overwhelming, particularly by the young people. The English is exceptional, the education levels here is very high, it's the highest in Pakistan. We actually bowled and fielded quite effectively, helped by the fact that we had three Chitrali players playing for us today. Fakhar took four for 22 off his six overs, which does mean that the remaining 24 overs went for more than 200, but never mind. Well, it's the first time we've just missed a full team, all 10 wickets. In the 29th over, one ball to go, 232 all out. We've got 30 overs to bat and we can win this game. Mind you, when we say it's gettable, that normally means 55 all out. I think we've got a genuine chance to end this tour, never too wholly defeated and humiliated, on a famous victory. We did, we bowled well actually. We have bowled one maiden over all tour, and it wasn't one of us who bowled it. 
And we're, how much are we chasing, Joe? We're chasing 232. Mm. The last of the wounded tigers is now going into bat. Uh, I fear our tour is on the brink of extinction. <laughs> Looks desperate, really. Well, the thing that has to be remembered is that visiting sides of whatever quality have always found it difficult to win in Pakistan, and we have been no exception to that general rule. Disgraced in some well done, matches, Cosmo. not disgraced in others. So Zeeshan and Cosmo, well, this is the last partnership of Tor. This man with an enormous run up. Oh, that's it. No more wounded tigers. That's very bold. Well, defeat again. Extinction. Played seven, <coughs> lost seven. However, you have got brilliant players. And when you have the right equipment and the and the backing, you are going to produce first class players. This is essential that Pakistan becomes more and more drawn into the rest of the world. It mustn't be isolated. We want to have an international looking Pakistan, a Pakistan that is stable and prosperous.